Now, they're also having trouble with 911 emergency calls in Connecticut. This is in Bridgeport. A car dealer bought some advertising space on a billboard out by the highway. They wanted to let you know that you can take their cars home for an overnight test drive. Wow, what an idea. Now you're one night stand with someone in the back seat that you just met in a bar. It's also a one night stand with the BMW that you're using to impress them. Anyway, to sell the novel idea of an overnight test drive, they placed a life-size mannequin on top of the billboard. It looked exactly like a man dressed in pajamas was sitting there. And right next to the fake man in his jammies was a six-foot-tall teddy bear. Now, unlike the fake man, this was a real teddy bear. The state police have been flooded with 911 emergency calls from drivers who are worried that a man and his teddy bear are about to jump off a billboard. This is a true story. Now, look, you can't say, oh, well, they're driving so fast on the highway. How could they tell it wasn't a real man? Have you ever driven in Connecticut? You top out about 10 miles an hour on I-95. So apparently, this car dealer figures that men who buy BMWs, they also like to sleep with six-foot-tall teddy bears. And people in Bridgeport, Connecticut, they snap into action immediately whenever a depressed teddy bear is ready to jump to his death. Now, this next news story, it pains me to say it. It also comes from Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. I was born and raised there. And as of March this year, it is official. Connecticut has the absolute, positively dumbest criminals in the world. In Fairfield, Connecticut, police arrested 27-year-old Albert Bailey and his unnamed teenaged accomplice after they tried to rob a bank. These guys, now they're from Bridgeport, the next town over. They show up at the bank and they were arrested. Now, how could the police be waiting for them? Well, and this is a true story. Bailey and his accomplice had called in the robbery demand. Yeah, they called at the bank and told them to have a bag of money ready for pickup. They showed up 10 minutes later, and the police were ready for the collar. Now, hey, we all get tired of waiting in lines. But phoning in a bank robbery? The really amazing thing is that they were able to phone a bank and actually talk to a human being to make the robbery demands. If you would like to make a deposit, press 2. If you would like to rob the bank, press 3. Incredible. Now, over in Stanford, Connecticut, just this week, a 35-year-old man was arrested because he showed up at a restaurant called the Discovery Cafe, and he started swinging his axe at the customers. Now, no one was hurt. The cops managed to arrest him and take away the axe. Actually, apparently, one of the customers and the guy were wrestling with the axe when the cop showed up. Now, the axe swinger says he was only doing it because he's angry at the Discovery Cafe. Well, duh. They have a mandatory frisking policy, and he doesn't want to be frisked. How good can the food be at this place that he can't just find somewhere else to go for lunch? The biggest mystery here, why does a cafe have a mandatory frisking policy? What the heck are they frisking you for? Are people sneaking in their own forks? The funny thing is, there are bars you can go to in, in New York City where if you pay somebody 10 bucks, they'll frisk you. <laughs> You'll get a good frisking. Actually, in New Britain, Connecticut, 41-year-old Tracy Palmer might have been looking for a good frisking. Uh, she walked into a bank in April this year and said she had a bomb. She wanted money. It's actually the bank where she keeps her money. So she wore a hat and sunglasses and no one recognized her. The police spotted her pickup truck and arrested her. Now, apparently, she admitted everything. She told them that the $2,000 was tucked into her bra. She went on and on and on about she planned the robbery, how she needed the money to pay for her father's medicine. Wow. I don't think she thought of it as a bank robbery. I think that she thought she was auditioning for the Real Housewives of New Britain, Connecticut. Now, actually, there's a reality show ready to roll in Bridgeport, Connecticut. 30-year-old Brian Banikowski is asking a judge to issue a restraining order against his soon-to-be in-laws. He and his fiancée are getting hitched in just a few weeks from today. <laughs> and who doesn't love a June wedding? 
and Banikowski wants the entire wife's family to be banned from the ceremony. Now, I know, all you single women in Connecticut, you must be sad that this guy's no longer available. What a keeper. Actually, the in-laws were quoted in the newspapers as saying that they don't get why the restraining order is needed. They all think Brian Banikowski is such a loser, they'd never go to the wedding anyway. Now, by the way, I really don't know anything about the bride in this case, but somebody needs to tip her off. Get the hell out of there. Go hurry. You can do better than this. Huh, that's just craziness in Connecticut.